Joy and I went to bed, uh -oh. flip, flipped on Letterman uh -oh. just to see what's going on. This guy, Letterman, is obsessed with Oprah. Oh, Oprah's yes. coming to a show. It's like he's coming down from heaven right. to visit. Oprah's coming. Oprah's coming. Oprah's coming. coming. And so at one point, <clears throat> you see the screen back here? The, he's got something just like that. And the face of Oprah looms up. No. Looms up. It's like Oprah's overlooking all of us, you know. <laughs> and he is so nervous. What am I going to ask him, Paul? What am I going to ask him? Paul says, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> They're like little babies over there. Well, you know, what you should do is... <clears throat> Well, we should get Oprah here so Regis can show Dave how it's done. Oprah's been on our show five, six, seven times. Not since I've been here. No. <laughs> so, so he's beside. I'm going on the show tonight. I oh, I know, and you're gonna you're gonna sing. Trump and I are gonna sing tonight. Oh, I mean. just the greatest thing I've ever heard. You and Trump singing. That's right. We're gonna it could not get better. We're gonna sing a we're gonna sing a song from my album. Now let's see what the name of that album oh. is. Oh yeah, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. That's it, yeah. That's Trump funny. and I singing tonight, but here's the deal. I don't think people were aware that you have an album. You almost never mention it on the show. So here's the deal. Then he dismisses the Oprah picture. She fades away. Yeah. And there's a little thing hanging down by a string about the size of this. You know, it's a little, little picture hanging by a string, looking so insignificant, you know, and unimportant. And then he goes over to it, and with his hand, you know how you swat a fly off a, off a, off a like that, yeah, you know? Yeah, uh-huh, he flicked. He flicked the picture. And it was me! No! It was me! Like I'm nothing. Did we get the Dave cut out? Did I get the? No, I don't get the Dave cut. Go get the he, Dave cut out. Nah, get the Dave no, cut No, leave him alone. Get the Dave cut out. Where is that thing? Where is that thing? Oh, please, we they put it away. We should throw uh, Thanksgiving dinner leftovers at it. <laughs> no, no, leave it alone. So anyway, th that's my introduction to the show tonight. You know, I mean, that's how they treat me over there. But it's be it's out of love. Well, I don't know anymore. You're like, I you're used like, to think he liked me, but I don't know. No, he does. The two of you, when, when, when you showed up during my taping, and the two of you um, had uh, something that I heard never happens there. The two of you had real, a real conversation. He walked you off the set, and the two of you were discussing travel plans together. And, well, and I only knew that because I wasn't leaving. I had to see how this uh, unfolded. <laughs> you know, so the three of us are standing there on the side of the stage. I'm sure they wanted to be left alone. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I locked in and you eavesdropped did. the whole you conversation. Did. You, you, uh, and you cut off a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Who, me? Yes, because we saw you there, and Dave went, and I said, and you know, and that was it. Oh, I'm sorry. Next time I'll leave, but then you have to take careful notes and tell me everything. <laughs> but you know, I do think the, the Letterman show is one of the most imaginative shows. Mm -hmm. Come on, bring it over bring here. Bring it over here. We'll talk to him. Bring it yeah. over here, Rock. Oh, buddy. Okay. So anyway, last night the big I'll flick you. Flick. <laughs> so anyway, last night the big boy, they do imaginative stuff over there. They really do. You know what he did last night? What he had a little do? spigot next to his desk. And okay. from the spigot came a half inch a cable, a plastic cable. Okay. That went right up the wall, out the ceiling of the studio, up Broadway, across <laughs> Broadway over to 54th Street into a Starbucks coffee shop <laughs> connected to another spigot. Then they put a camera on this guy. And incidentally, this was the most empty Starbucks store I've ever seen. <laughs> Usually you go in there, you wait in line. For hours. Then, then you get up there and you're so frightened you can't understand the menu, you don't know what you're ordering. <laughs> but there was nobody in the store, so you know they threw everybody out. And they had one guy there, and this guy talked to Dave. And then he turned the spigot on. And then the camera, all of a sudden, the, the plastic cable became dark with coffee, racing through its veins, going through all the way and up the thing and across Broadway and down Broadway and into the studio. And, and then you could see it coming all along. It was fabulous. Is that real? Listen, 
out of this. Listen to me. Came right down to his spigot. There was the big boy. You were great last night. Anyway, <laughs> he held the spigot. He put the spigot on. He got coffee. He took a sip, and he said, it's cold. <laughs> didn't like it. It was too cold for him. Wasn't it, big boy? Uh, Is that true? How did they do that? How could they possibly do that? Gelman, we should do things like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'd love that There's stuff, There's a Starbucks Reed. across the street. If you want something, let me know. I'll go run out during commercial <laughs> break. Um, unbelievable. Yeah, it was a pretty good stunt, and uh, then eventually it broke, and it fell into the street. <laughs> but you been there. I mean, sometimes they'll have you for no apparent reason. You know, they'll say, um, Kelly, since you're here, can you drop watermelons off the roof onto yeah. the street? Crazy stuff. And and so you go, okay. And but you think, how do they get away with shutting down the street, clearing all the pedestrians? Oh, this they, is New York City. I know, but they somehow you get it done, don't you? <laughs> Why does she keep smiling at me? <laughs> Not so talkative now. Got nothing to say now, huh? Hey! <laughs> okay, leave him alone. Now, here's the deal. I want you to know something, and remember this. I will Yesterday, remember. I made a mistake. I said about this foot story that my size that was taken, that was measured by the guy out at Xenia in Beverly Hills, was five and a half. And it was embarrassing. I swallowed it to tell you that. And Joy was mortified. Sure. Yeah. 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 Ow! <laughs> you okay? Oh. What happened? See what you did? Stop it! <laughs> I slipped off this thing. Oh, baby, are I, you okay? I'll tell you why I slipped. Oh, because gosh. I've got new shoes on. And well, not like that. <laughs> Here they are. Look at this. Big boy. That is a beautiful new shoe, and if I was a betting man, I'd say that's at least a six, six and a half. <laughs> well, it turns out that the measurement, I called him up, because after the show, uh, Gelman said, you better call. I called him, and it was not five and a half, it was six and a half. Italian measurements. Now, what Gelman has done, he's found a guy here to come, and he's got an experienced shoe fitter. 40, 40 years, 40 years, right, Gelman? This guy has been... Serving, uh, serving uh, men, you know, and, and, and their foot needs. <laughs> Selling shoes. Stop looking at me! <laughs> Make me nervous when you're looking at me. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he's going to measure my feet. We're going to get a definitive measurement once and for all. That's good reach. <laughs> I so Joy was more embarrassed why, why about you she, revealing the size five and a half. Why was she so upset? Well, because we women like to brag about our husband's feet size. <laughs> why? That's why? what we do over Excuse coffee. me, why? Why? What difference does it make whether he's a five and a half or a because 15 and a half? Because with women, every, everything with women is an inside joke. It's stuff that you boys just don't get. <laughs> and we relish in it. Well, what is the joke? Tell us what the joke is. <laughs> What's the joke? There's no joke. <laughs> well, not for you, anyhow. I don't understand. Did, uh, before you married Mark. <laughs> he's, a, he's a size 11. Le His heart. I certainly didn't marry him for his sparkling wit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, Gilman, we're going to get this yeah, guy we're out here. We're going to find out what the size is once and, and for all. <laughs> now, we have I Barbara. I saw him wedge, his, he wedged himself into a pair of my shoes yesterday with a thick sweat sock. I believe a six and a half. <laughs> I'm a believer. Volume. Best See, girl. you're selling yours one CD at a time out front here. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's funny? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm 84th. Gilman, did you say you're 87? 83. 83, Rich. So give, give, me, give, give me some of those big music names that are yeah, trailing on. me, that are behind me. Trailing you. Yeah, oh, who's, yeah. who's 84? Well, 88 is Insane Clown Posse. Hey! You beat the Insane I'm Clown Posse. I'm beating 
can huh? see Cloud Posse. How do you like that? They're yeah. not gonna like that. What else, Gilman? Uh, oh, you're right ahead of Big and Rich. Ooh. Big and Rich? See, you you're know, ahead your of... next year's album should be titled Bigger and Richer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're ahead of My Chemical Romance. Uh, Gelman, <laughs> give me some names. Give me. <laughs> oh, you're ahead of Casting Crowns. Oh, forget it. You just... <laughs> no, you're ahead of 50 Cent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh... Well, yeah. I it's probably, not, but it's his album's been on the chart 38 weeks, though. See? So what? I'm beating him, aren't I? Oh, I hope he doesn't take it personally. I know. You better. <laughs> Just kidding, Fifty. Just kidding, baby. <laughs> Christmas will come and go. Uh, I'll be gone. <laughs> anyway.